Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Ladies in London, Season 2, Episode 9, Unbelievable Balls. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited to be talking about this one. I absolutely love Caroline Fleming's castle. I want to talk about that. I want to get into the trip and talk about it all. So let's get into it. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. So the episode picks up where they're leaving Copenhagen. I loved Copenhagen. Beautiful hotel. Fantastic restaurant. I just think it looks like such a cool place. Um, we see everybody getting ready in the morning. Julie's going over to Marissa's. Everybody's packing up. I'm still jealous of Sophie's hair. <laughs> everybody's getting ready to go. Caroline Stanberry and Caroline Fleming are hanging out. And Luke shows up to do Caroline... Uh, Stanberry's makeup and she tells him about Annabelle being weird last night and at the dinner and that basically Annabelle's being dark and moody. We saw this in the last episode. Definitely something going on with her. They're talking about how um, insular she's being. Okay, so they all meet up to go to the castle. They load into this um, van and they're drinking champagne and it looks like a wonderful way to travel. <laughs> through the countryside. She's excited to see her parents. Carolyn Fleming is. She's hoping everyone will behave in a respectable manner. Ha ha ha. Um, Caroline Stanberry and Julie are talking about Annabelle and how she's just been acting differently. And So Julie and Annabelle were really good friends before. And remember when Annabelle had her accident, Julie was there for her. So Julie is now confused, saying, I don't know where my Annabelle has gone. Caroline Stanberry to camera says, I think Julie needs to have a voice, not let Annabelle pull her around. Um, but they're having this conversation like a foot from Annabelle, so she can clearly hear them talking. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. I don't want to go too dark here because that's not why I watch this show. I love this show. It's so fun for me. I love the travel, I, all of it. But I'm just saying out loud. So we saw last season, of course, Annabelle got very hurt um, in the horse accident. Now there's speculation. Don't know. Of course, we know Annabelle has passed. But there was speculation that pills might have been involved. And I read that basically they think it had that it the beginning and the end was that that accident, and that maybe you know, pain management stuff got out of hand and it went down from there. Um, I believe what actually took her out, I believe that it was a stroke. I'm, you know, anyway, it just makes me so sad to think maybe she's going through more right now. And maybe that's why she's being dark and insular. We see, obviously, she, uh, well, we don't see it yet, but it coming up, she's dealing with some Alexander McQueen stuff. I just don't think she ever recovered from losing her best friend. And then, you know, on top of that, dealing with the accident, and then if there if there is some sort of pill addiction or whatever it is, some sort of addiction involved, and then to spiral, oh god, it's terrible. It makes me sad to see this part. Okay, let's get on to some happy stuff. So they arrive at this beautiful Danish castle, gorgeous. So her tenth great grandfather father won a battle, and as a prize, they won this castle. Isn't that crazy? Um, She's the first girl that's the heir to the castle. Uh, big, beautiful stateroom. She's showing them all around. She's really thought about who gets what room. Um, Juliet's room has a church off of the side of it, which is kind of hilarious. Julie says she's excited to have a gorgeous room. She says usually she's pretty low maintenance. She doesn't really care, so people just stick her wherever. <laughs> Um, so it's huge rooms, absolutely gorgeous, stunning castle. I just, I really enjoyed seeing this. We see Caroline Stanberry and Sophie Stanberry saying that she's just having the most stressful time. It's been a horrible few months of her whole life because of gift library closing. Uh, Sophie brought champagne in her pack, so Caroline asked her to go get it. 
so we see Caroline Stanberry talking about this house. It has 18 rooms. She said she grew up there and she didn't think anything about it. She thought everybody came from this sort of place. There are huge hunting trophies everywhere. It's like animal stuff. I'm not going to show you too much there. It's pretty disgusting. Um, so Caroline invites them all to have a cup of tea and enjoy the evening. Then we see them all get dressed for dinner. Everyone's hanging out and people are smoking in the waiting area. It kind of blows my mind. I know that's a European thing. It's just kind of shocking to see people smoking in this big, beautiful home. Uh, so they end up having this fancy dinner. We don't meet the parents until I believe the next night, but it's a big fancy dinner. They do like a buffet style, which was kind of surprising to see, but um, they're all still being kind of weird. Annabelle's being weird. They're all being weird with each other. Julie just doesn't understand why she's acting this way and why Annabelle is trying to bring people down. Luke says she's not happy and she took you under her wing and now you're starting to evolve and spread your wings and uh, you're building your confidence and it's kind of bringing Annabelle down. So we see um, Marissa's asking, you know, what's up with the tension? And Annabelle says they were talking behind her back on the bus ride over. Which they were, and that is pretty shitty. I get it. Uh, Caroline Fleming is disappointed that they're doing this now. She really wanted to have them out at the restaurant. And she thought they had, but to bring it at the family home, she's pissed. Caroline Stanberry says Julie was up Annabelle's ass. <laughs> Juliet says Julie caters to Annabelle, which is funny because that's what she, that's what Juliet does to Caroline Stanberry. Julie says, I'm glad people are noticing I'm growing a few balls. It's an, and it's not just Jub balls. Um, Stanberry to camera says Annabelle wants to keep Julie where she is because it suits her. And I think it's funny because I think Caroline Stanberry and Annabelle are a lot alike and they just don't realize it. Um, they both want to be Queen Bee. They both want people to kind of be really close to them and not be close to the other one. That sort of thing. It just... It's just funny how similar they are and they don't see it. So, Caroline Stanberry is trying to talk to Annabelle. And Annabelle says, I'm aware of what Stanberry is trying to do. It's underhanded. So, while they're talking, we do see Annabelle putting her hands over her ears like a petulant child at dinner, which kind of made me laugh. Annabelle is saying she will not rise to this. Um, Stanberry is saying, before you were Caprice's puppet, then you're Annabelle's puppet... Now you're on your own talking to Julie. Um, I didn't think Julie was Caprice's puppet, though. Maybe she was. All right. So Juliet says there seems to be something between Annabelle and Caroline Stanberry, and it's coming to a head. Well, obviously. Annabelle calls Cannibal. <laughs> wow. Caroline Stanberry a cow with drivel coming out. <laughs> and she says she sounds unattractive and stupid. My goodness. Okay, so it's the next day. Fleming freaks out. It's the weirdest thing. She says, when you're invited to someone's home and someone invites you down for breakfast, it's rude not to come down. So breakfast was at 10. Everybody walks down at 1030 and they're kind of shocked. Caroline Fleming is slamming doors and she's pissed. Now I get both sides of the argument. Fleming is right. If you're at somebody else's home, you kind of got to do what they want to do. You know, especially at a regal home like this where you have chefs that are cooking for you. But it's also their holiday. So wouldn't you maybe say, be down at 10, but then actually start breakfast at 1030? You know what I mean? Whatever it is. Just give them a little room to take a minute, you know, and take a breath, whatever. They stayed up late drinking last night. So I don't understand why she had to be so regimented like that. It seemed like more of a casual day, so it's just kind of weird to see her react like that. Um, oh, Flem uh, Stanberry's trying to say, Luke should have woken her up, and Fleming shuts that down and says, you're a grown woman. So Fleming is saying her parents are coming today, and she doesn't want this to happen with them. So it's just a weird way to start the morning. It kind of puts everybody on edge, and they're just not quite sure what to do with all this. Uh, we see Julie doing yoga. She's trying to get calm. And Annabelle, oh, she's talking about Annabelle and says she isn't making an effort. She's not happy. 
especially not happy that Julie's not ha that Julie is happy now, and she doesn't want to confront her though because they're on holiday. So, Julie, I every time I think Julie is coming on her own, she says stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, Julie. Okay, so then we see Sophie. Um, she goes into Annabelle's room. She's explained that the plugs in her room don't work. So she's going to plug in her rollers and just be a few minutes. And, and Annabelle's like, yeah, sure, whatever you need. So she has to unplug this phone, whatever, um, the charger, to plug in her rollers. Well, at the same time, Annabelle gets a call. And it's from her sister. And she kind of goes behind a door, so you only get to hear the dialogue. And she keeps saying, no, and, you know, you shouldn't say anything. And she's obviously upset. She's crying. So we find out later when Sophie's talking to everybody, she explains that, she, that Annabelle received a call that a, I believe it was a book, maybe an article, but I believe it's a book coming out about Alexander McQueen. And they got quotes from people and Annabelle doesn't think it's true stuff that's coming out. And she's especially sensitive because it's the anniversary of his death. And it's been five years, and she says she's so upset because uh, they're doing this dark side of fashion spin on things. And there's no recourse, and, and basically they can publish whatever they want because he's not able to speak up, and she just doesn't think it's fair. So I get more why she's upset and where she's coming from. Sophie says it must be hard for her if you love someone, you don't want to see them trashed or put down in any way. And Fleming is really trying to make her feel better. And Sophie says she does have a soft center. She just doesn't want to let people see it. Julie says she's relieved that Annabelle is finally opening up, but she still feels the gap between her and Annabelle, and she feels like it's getting bigger. Um, which was surprising because she was there when Annabelle had her meltdown. So I figured she'd be a little bit more nurturing during this part. But she she wasn't. I guess she's just still focused on the rift between them or the, I don't know, the drifting of their friendship. So meanwhile, we see Caroline Fleming, Caroline Stanberry, again the Caroline. So I'm going to call them Fleming and Stanberry. They are, they're going to visit her mom. Um, her mom passed away and they have this family area where they lay people to rest and they're going to see her mom's urn and um Stanberry is saying I can't imagine how it is to grow up without a mother and so we find out Fleming's mom passed away basically what happened is she thought she had kidney stones she went in for a scan to ha to see about taking care of the kidney stones and they found a tumor, and unfortunately, her mother passed a few weeks later. And that, so sad, so tragic. Oh, it breaks my heart. I hate seeing the sad stuff. So, changing gears, they go back to the house, and they all get dressed to the absolute nines. They look gorgeous. They have a gorgeous table, all fancy set up, um, and they're all dressed beautifully. And it's Caroline's father and her stepmother and. It looks like her godfather and some family friends and all come to this big formal dinner. Uh, Stanberry says it's a giant step for Fleming to bring us all there. And uh, basically Fleming has had a rocky relationship with her family and she wants she wants to be more accepted. And, they, and she thinks bringing everybody home, they'll all be accepted. So we find out in a very interesting twist that Caroline Fleming's godfather... Uh, like uh, somebody in the family apparently killed Lord Montague, which is weird because um, that's one of Julie's distant or her husband's distant family. It's just an interesting twist. So, okay, they explain oh that Caroline Fleming's relationship with her bat her dad is a bit stormy at times. So they all sit down for this big fancy dinner and Stanberry says she rarely gets emotional but she's an emotional wreck because of everything going on in her business and everything going on in her life. We see Fleming give a toast to everybody. Marissa ends up making a toast too and she says she loves Caroline Fleming's sister and the country and now she's falling in love with Caroline Fleming. It was a nice moment. They had had their tension. It sounds like 
hopefully put it behind them. So that was nice to see. Um, P.S. I love all of their dresses. This is the dress that Annabelle wore when she walked the runway. It was one of McQueen's. It's gorgeous on her. I thought they all looked stunning. The only one I didn't care for was Marissa. And I usually love her fashion, but I did not care for the white lace dress. And you could totally see her bra in the back of it, which whatever. But I'm just saying, like, it was just kind of shocking to see that because she usually has better fashion sense. So after the big fancy dinner, they go into the big fancy ballroom and they start getting trashed. And it's actually really funny to watch because they start waltzing and they're all laughing at Sophie. They said she is gone and... Um, Sophie and Julie are dancing around and kicking people in the rear and yelling that they won. <laughs> and I was thinking, man, that looks like fun. Um, let's see. They all go have a last night cap and then they go off to bed. Before they go to bed, they do a huge group hug and says, clearly there's a lot of love here between us all. So it's nice to see. It's nice to see things end up that way. And that's how the episode ends. So that's episode nine. We have one more episode left of the season. Again, I'm enjoying talking about this so much. I'm totally down to keep going. If you want to do, they only have one more season left. Oh, it makes me so sad. I just love Ladies of London. But we'll find something else to watch afterwards. But let's keep going with Ladies of London. I'm enjoying recapping it. And you guys have been so sweet about commenting that you're enjoying it too. So let's keep going. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care. Bye-bye.